So now we're going to go ahead and sort of ignore the finally for a moment and take a look at the underground accelerator. So for the purposes of this portion of the demo, my signal will be coming into the underground accelerator, passing through unsaturated through the finally, just my dry signal coming out. And so we're just going to focus on this because we still get the gain from the underground accelerator. So let's go ahead and start with the EQ on and find a good level here. Okay, so one thing I wanted to point out here, I had my gain set about, you know, 10, 11 o'clock here, and the level was really only at about like 8 or 9 o'clock. To get sort of the same signal, I have to get my master all the way over to almost 3 o'clock here. And the reason is that this EQ circuit, uh, you know, by the nature of it, is going to suck out some gain. So Nathan points out on his website that when you turn the EQ off on this pedal, you can expect a jump of about 30 dB of gain. So that's something to watch out for. That's a lot of gain. And that means that you're probably not going to want to mess with this switch in a live situation because this is what's going to happen. Lots of gain, right? You're going to blow something up. So keep that in mind. If you want to use this as just a tube saturation pedal, set that up ahead of time and make sure that you've got your gain set up because there's a lot to be had in this pedal. If you're going to use the EQ section, expect that you're going to have to raise the gain and the master quite a bit to compensate. So here's the sound of the pedal, the underground accelerator with the EQ on keeping the gain at a reasonable level. And as I mentioned, this is the flat response. Treble and bass at zero, mids at 100%. I'm gonna show you my dry signal again. So I, to my ears, the underground accelerator is taking off a little bit of treble. Maybe that's, you know, uh, s some of the tube saturation adding a little bit of wool. But I hear it dampening the treble frequencies a little bit. So let's go ahead and start there and boost these up about 25-30%. Let's go 50. So it's not really that extreme, um, even with the treble all the way up. It's definitely boosting, but it's not insane. So I kind of like that. I don't like treble responses that get out of control really quickly. I'm going to go ahead and leave that around like 60 to 75%. Now let's hear what the bass control does. We'll add about 25% bass. And what the heck, all the way up. So the bass is a little bit more extreme, and I'm also noticing that these um, these three controls, or at least these two so far, feel kind of interactive. I feel like as I'm adding more bass, I'm losing a little bit of treble. Let's try maybe like 30 to 40 percent bass, and then maybe like 75 percent treble. <laughs> my dry signal again. Yeah, I like that. That adds something. That adds a little bit of character. A little bit of presence.
presence. Now let's see what happens when we take some of these mids down. Here is 75% mid. percent and zero so I'm not hearing a whole lot of difference with the mids let's go ahead and take bass and treble down and just focus on the mids here here's mids all the way up and we're gonna switch to the bridge pickup on my bass Let's go 50, interesting, so when the other two controls are at zero, bass and treble are at zero, the mids kind of act like a volume. I'll have to talk to Nathan a little bit more about that. As I said, it seems like these controls are very interactive, so I think it's going to take a little bit more playing around to figure out what's going on here. Uh, that said, I think that the bass and treble controls are very useful. But all in all, I think I'm a finally guy. For me, I just wanted a little bit of tube saturation in my signal. Um, I already have you know, a preamp in my bass. I like messing with the knobs on my amplifiers. So I don't need another stage of EQ on my pedal board personally. The finally though really, really does a great job of just adding a little bit of dimensionality and warmth to your signal. And I really love this feature here that you can you know, send the signal just through the XLR or also out to your pedal board and amplifier very useful, very well made. Um, Nathan has a huge lineup of pedals that do a wide variety of different things to your sound. So be sure to check out Sushi Box Effects. Uh, thanks to Ian Martin Allison for, for tipping me onto these pedals and thank you to Nathan for letting me try them out. I am very appreciative and I hope you all enjoy this review. Please leave some comments, ask some questions below. I will leave you with a little bit more playing here on the finally.